Welcome back to the teaching for today. Let's get right back to the Word of God, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, of clear thinking. We're talking to prejects, people who have been rejected by their parents, one or both of them, parental rejects, uh, whose souls have been broken and because uh, they are living with broken souls, their spirits have leaked out. They're living empty and uh, consumptively trying to fill void and empty spaces. And one of the dangers to living that way with an unhealed soul, which is the entire purpose of this ministry, to heal your soul so that your spirit, uh, so that the Spirit of God can fill and overflow your life so that you can do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think so that you can do miracles like Jesus did so that you can reach your potential and your destiny so that you can be all that God designed you to be so that you can live without that feeling that something is incomplete and uh, uh, that there's a glass ceiling on the inside that you just haven't been able to break through uh, we can eradicate all of that by getting the soul healed and uh, that's what this ministry is about but uh, when you are uh, living with a broken soul uh, it is because there has not been the kind of love poured into your life that uh, protects the soul or heals the soul um, and that's what the love of God will do for you it will transform you from the inside out it will restore you it will repair all the broken places that's why Jesus came he said I the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he's uh, he, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted those who have broken souls and so their hearts are messed up well um, what we've been saying is that uh, the uh, danger for prejects is that uh, by definition we have not been loved uh, completely uh, so that uh, the uh, absence of that love puts, at, puts us at risk for control by the spirit of fear. Because scripture tells us, 1 John 4 uh, and 19, that perfect love casts out fear. Complete love, effective love, casts out fear. Uh, fear has torment. He that fears has not been made perfect or complete a whole in love. Uh, so when uh, you did not receive the love was not manifest to you, you did not recognize it, it did not uh, uh, minister to you like it needed to, uh, the absence of love opened portals for the spirit of fear in your life. And when the spirit of fear shows up, there are three faces that it manifests, it presents. Uh, that is the lack of power in your life, the lack of uh, um, love, the ability to give love, to love people without thinking what I'm, what's in it for me, uh, and uh, the lack of clarity, lack of a sound mind, a mind that is able to pick up on the things of the Spirit of God. And so um, we've talked about what the uh, lack of clarity looks like in the life of a preject. Uh, uh, we expect to uh, get harvest without seed, without sowing. We look for dividends uh, where we've made no investments we look for gain without experiencing any pain we look for reward without risk and then we've talked about uh, the uh, second aspect of it which is just the flip side uh, just the the the, uh, the conviction that nothing that we do is going to work that uh, if I sow seed I'm never going to get harvest if I make an investment I'm never going to get a dividend if I take a risk I'm never going to get a reward <laughs> if I if, 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 if I experience some pain it's never going to be good for me never work for me I'm never going to gain from my pain even though scripture tells us that our light affliction which is but for a moment works for us did you know pain is your employee <laughs> it's working for you man pain works for you when you're walking with God when you're uh, living with a soul that's whole uh, pain is going to work for you. It's an employee that God assigns to every single one of us. And guess what else? Uh, not only does pain work for us, but we don't even have to pay the bill, man. God pays it. 
But anyway, so um, uh, we we talked about we we talked about uh, uh, the fact that if you are a child of God and you've got a whole soul, you're going to reap when you sow. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Even in the world, people who don't know God experience harvest from their sowing. They don't sow into the kingdom of God, but they sow into other places where they are also reap. Because that's the way the universe was designed, was set up. So now, what happens if you've been sowing and you haven't been reaping? And I know some of you are saying, well, you know what, I've tried that stuff, man. I've sown and I've not seen any results. I've not gotten any harvest. Well, let me tell, let, let me share with you what we were be beginning to share yesterday. And that is that um, there are three reasons why you may have sown and not reaped. We talked about the fact that you're a priest and God treats you like a priest. Well, in Malachi chapter 2, uh, we've got some instructions for priests. And, uh, and so let me just read the first uh, three verses to you. Now, you priests, this commandment is for you. Are you a priest? Absolutely. Uh, you are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. Revelation 1 and 6 says that he has made you to be a king and a priest unto God. You're a priest. We talked about that yesterday. So this commandment is for you, not just for those in ancient Israel who wore the uh, the head wrap, uh, the, the head uh, rest and the, and, and the tunic uh, and, and all of the, uh, the gear that priests were supposed to wear, but you're a priest also. So uh, now you priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not listen and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says Yahweh of armies, then will I send the curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Now he's talking not about the things that they get as blessings because we misunderstand the word blessings and we think that blessings are things and when they're not, blessings are uh, uh, to, a blessing is a dynamism to increase. It's a power that God puts on the inside of us. But what he's talking to the priests about right here is their ability to bless because God endows the priests with the, with the ability. He's given them a mandate to go and bless in the name of the Lord. So he's saying, I've turned your blessings into curses. So when you bless somebody, instead of it producing something good in their life, I've turned it around so that it doesn't produce for them. So you can go and bless people and they won't be blessed. You, you, All of your blessings that you have been uttering, that you have been expressing, I've turned it around. So nobody gets healed when you pray for them. And uh, nobody uh, experiences transformation when you counsel them. And nobody uh, gets saved when you preach to them because I've cursed your blessing. He says, then I will send the curse on you. I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have cursed them already. Why? Because you do not lay it to heart. What? To give glory to his name. So he says, Behold, I will rebuke your seed and will spread dung on your faces, even the dung of your feasts, and you will be taken away with it. Uh, you will know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant may be with Levi, says Yahweh of armies. What is he saying? I will, I will, I will rebuke your seed. In other words, your seed won't work. I'm going to talk to the seed and I'm going to tell it not to produce like it's supposed to produce. Seed is supposed to uh, 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 die and bring life. Except a corn of the wheat fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings or bears much fruit. Uh, that's the purpose of the seed. It's to give its life for life. The seed dies so that life comes. <laughs> and, and God is saying, I, I'm going to rebuke your seed. Uh, for these three reasons and the first one is you don't give glory to my name your seed gets rebuked and what does glory mean it means to shine the spotlight on God so what he's saying is that if you're a priest unto me and you're not shining the spotlight on my name you're, you're, you're instead of shining the spotlight on me you're shining it on other things other people other places uh, then I'm going to rebuke your seed we're gonna pick this up tomorrow father thank you for this revelation help us to begin to walk it out in our lives in Jesus' name, amen. All right, do three things for me. Send this to somebody you know who needs it. 
and then go to our YouTube page and subscribe to our videos. Go to the bottom of the page. Leave a channel comment so others can be blessed by how God is dealing with you through these messages. All right, Mom, I'm your host, Earl Middleton, and I'm reminding you again to live forcefully. Demonstrate the kingdom from a whole soul. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.